I need to be brave enough to defend my sisters, even if I wasn't going to go to that protest. Also, like, yeah. even if I don't agree, and yeah, even if I don't agree correctly, with it, right? right? This is what happened at UCLA, right? You know, we got text messages at midnight. At, you know, people were saying our sisters fear are fearing for their lives, right? And so hundreds of Muslim men literally drive an hour or two hours away Allah. because a, a woman has said, "Hey, I'm I'm in fear." What would you tell the parents of these youth? in the encampments. We want to tell the parents, don't try to fix it. Mm -hmm. How can the Muslim who believes that Allah is al-Razzaq, is the provider, the mm -hmm. ultimate provider, mm -hmm. not be out there? The protests have shown us, again, people who believe the, pro the police are here to protect us. They're not here to protect us. They're here mm -hmm. to protect the state. So literally, we saw mm -hmm. this, right, again, at UCLA, where like, police watched 150 thugs beat up college shoot students. Fireworks right? at them. Shoot fireworks, you know, bear spray, mace. It's good we experience these things, so Allah is like, kind of shaking us and being like, get out of your false sense of security. Right? And then get up and do something yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon you all. Hello everyone, I'm Abdullah Oduro and welcome to the Iman Cave where we discuss issues of male excellence while being grounded in faith. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, had a beautiful statement that we have, many of us have heard over numerous years, different occasions, different times, different situations. We usually hear it on the basketball court or on the football field or in some type of physical engagement where he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Al Mu'min al Qawiyu Khairun wa Ahabu ilallahi min al Mu'mini al Da'ifi wa fi kulin khair. Al Hadith. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, The strong believer is better in the sight of Allah than the weak believer. And, both, and in both of them are good. The rest of the Hadith continues. This is what we say a lot of times for the person that is strong. And many scholars have explained that strength is, emanates from Iman initially because he said Al-Mu'min, the one that has the belief, and that strength ultimately should emanate from that. It doesn't deny the fact that someone is physically strong, but the question is, is someone that is brave necessarily strong? Is someone that is physically strong necessarily brave? I think there is a convolution between the two, but we are here today with the beautiful brothers to talk about bravery. Why is bravery important in the life of the human being, but particularly in the life of the Muslim man? We're going to discuss that today, inshallah, with none other. Firstly, with our beautiful co-host, brother Murad Awad, mashallah, and, and, mashallah, entrepreneur, uh, youth enthusiast. And also, we always have to remember to mention Bergadis, because you will find him at a food truck near you. Inshallah, Ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, mashallah. Thank you so much. And to your left, mashallah, you have none other but the one and only brother-in-law of yeah. the of the yani, <laughs> of, of lifetime, mashallah, Sheikh Muhammad al shanawi mashallah. Rejoice. Assalamu alaikum. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Dr. Muhammad al shanawi mashallah, we go way back. He's been the, he is the director of systematic theology here at Yaqeen Institute, and you will find a lot of videos for him online, uh, particularly those of the proofs of prophethood, you find the books, the proofs of pro the book, the proofs of prophethood, and it's part of the curriculum that we have Yaqeen have for the high schoolers that speak about the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and the proof of his prophethood, along with many other papers from them being to know him is to love him, to speaking about the names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And he is the Imam of the Jesus Son of Mary Mosque in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Mashallah. Welcome, Shaykh. Jazakallah khair. Okay. And there was a lot more to say about him, mashallah, to barakallah. And to my right, we have none other than a doctor, Usman Umarji. Mashallah. How are you doing, Shaykh? Alhamdulillah. 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 Dr. Usman Umarji, there's a lot about him too, Mashallah. He's the director of the Psycho Spiritual Studies Department in Yaqeen Institute. Uh, mashallah, director of survey research. Mashallah, he's a professor at the uh, College of Irvine, California, and he's been heavily involved in Irvine, California, in Orange County, if you will, Cali. What's so beautiful about this gathering today is, mashallah, we all go way back, alhamdulillah, mean. but to my right, in front of you, to your left, is someone that has been on the campuses in California, in Irvine. The Irvine 11, he was there. He's going to speak about it, mashallah, tabarakallah. And to my left, to your right, is someone that's been on the campuses in uh, the East Coast in general in regards to what is going on in Gaza. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, relieve the suffering of our brothers and sisters in Gaza mm -hmm. and all around the world, inshallah ta'ala. But particularly, we want to talk about this issue of bravery in this issue of Gaza and even outside of that. What is it? Why does it matter? And the lack of it, what does that mean? 
Before that, I want to start with the particular statement that Ibn al-Qayyim mentions in his book, Al-Furusiya al-Muhammadiyya, which would translate to be, what would Furusiya mean? Prophetic chivalry. Pr chivalry, ahsantum, mashallah. This is why, mashallah, he's a translator of numerous books, inshallah. At the very end of this book, if you have the opportunity to look at it, he speaks about the characteristics of shaja, and shaja is bravery, and he makes that difference between shaja and quwa, and he says shaja is, as he termed, a thabat and the nawazil. It is to be firm and solid in times of calamities, and the distinction that he makes is so beautiful, and I want y'all to expound upon this, inshallah, we'll start with that, is he gives the example of Abu Bakr. All of us know, radiallahu anhu, all of us know that Umar ibn al-Khattab was aqwa minhu jismiyan. He was stronger than him physically with his body and his stature. But Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was the bravest after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ibn al-Qayyim goes down the line, rahimullah, goes down the line in the situations in Islamic history when Abu Bakr exhibited his bravery. And there were times where Umar ibn al-Khattab needed Abu Bakr to remind him of stay strong in the times of calamities. That's very important. Bravery, a thabat in the nawazil, is being firm in times of calamities. So, starting off with you, Sheikh, uh, Dr. Saman, what do you see as bravery? How would you define bravery in the life of the Muslim man? So, like Ibn Qayyim mentions, uh, just to start off with, like, just being physically strong is not enough to be brave, right? Mm -hmm. So, the necessity here, we're talking about in times of difficulty, when one may even feel fear, one, one, one may feel these negative emotions that might be telling them, don't do something. That is what being brave means. It's at that time you're able to conjure up that strength that you have, mm -hmm. that spiritual strength and that physical strength and bring it into action. And so it's not this theoretical or abstract strength, but it's something that's come to life in the situations that mandate it. It's reflective. It comes off um, almost as habitual in many ways, right? Someone who has trained themselves in a certain way that bravery just emerges without even thinking about it mm -hmm. because you've trained yourself spiritually and physically so that when you're in a situation that mandates it, you're just like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do what's right. And mm -hmm. you don't even think about the consequences because you know that this is what Allah demands from you. Mm, SubhanAllah. Kind of similar mm -hmm. training. Those of you who don't know, mashallah, uh, we have two jujitsu specialists here, oh. so I feel very safe. <laughs> oh, <no>. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, we feel <laughs> safe with you, Shaykh. No, it's not about us. That's the, the just yeah. me, but I mean, we don't know. Am I yeah. brave when the time comes? No, I have sure, I conditioned myself, you know? You never know, Shaykh, uh, but we, we can have assumptions of khair, uh, you know? Allah bless you, I'll, I'll, be, be, you, I'll be, man. be behind you any day, Shaykh. <laughs> mashallah, oh, Allah, mashallah. How long you, I'm going to be with the, behind the ninjutsu oh, guy yeah, right here, man. Ninjutsu. Ninjutsu? Ninjutsu was a long time ago, but we have very loose gun laws in Pennsylvania. Yeah, so uh -huh. all you guys should feel safe right now. <laughs> and you got the crossbow too. <laughs> really? MashaAllah, tabarakallah. So, Sheikh Muhammad, how would you define uh, br uh, shaja'a, bravery? When you hear that word, what comes to mind? Yeah, Bismillah, Sama Rasulullah. I mean, shaja'a is huge, right? Like, bravery is very, very big. I mean, that's why even Ibn al Qayyim, rahimahullah, himself, elsewhere in, uh, in Madarij al Salikin, uh, he speaks about how foundational shaja'a is, bravery is. And he says that all good character's traits boil down to four. They stem from four. If you don't have these foundations, if your foundations are rocky, you won't be able to build on them, character. And so he says, sabr, patience. Uh, he says, iffa, uh, which is sort of like having integrity and the ability to restrain yourself from like sticking your hand out to others or reaching for what's not yours or humiliating yourself for the, for the sake of some material gain or worldly gain. Then the third one is shaja'a, is bravery. Mm -hmm. And I believe the fourth one is ilm, knowledge. You've got to be able to identify rights mm -hmm. from wrongs, discern, uh, make moral judgments. But in terms of shaja'a, it is, why is it so foundational? Because it's so overarching. Like you even mentioned Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, mm -hmm. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, uh, certainly, certainly, in moments of fear, uh, in moments of, of horror, he stood his ground. And that is part of what shaja'a is. Mm -hmm. I mean, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, no one loved him more than Abu Bakr radiallahu an. Mm -hmm. And yet he was the one that stabilized everybody else Allah. when it hit, right? And so he is the hallmark of bravery. But also, what may even come to mind before those moments of horror uh, are moments of need, right? Mm -hmm. When people need you. It takes great bravery to put yourself out on a limb for mm -hmm. others, right? Oh, yeah. And so, and that's, the hallmark of a bucket before anything else was generosity, right? Mm -hmm. And generosity is bravery. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, uh, Abu Bakr Sadiq radiallahu anhu, I left for them Allah and His Messenger. Allah. And that's a big part of what bravery is. You know, bravery, even like think of entrepreneurs. Like, 
they're able to imagine a different reality and embark onto the unknown and take the risk, mm -hmm. whether it's sort of charity, philanthropy, or it's sort of like business, mm -hmm. commerce, or otherwise, mm -hmm. that takes a lot of bravery, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm willing to accept the fact that this could go south <laughs> and I'll take a few hits before you know it gets on the uptick. And of course, uh, mm. this is inborn on some level, but you need some training. With experience, it builds, mm. but there is no greater feed for it than your faith, right? They say, like, yes. feed your faith and your fears starve to death, right? Mm. And so you need it, like, to stare death in the eye, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. When you face horrors, you need bravery. You need it to be generous because, like, stinginess is, in a sense, cowardice, right? It's yeah. a form of cowardliness. Mm -hmm. You need it also to be, to be manly in, in the gendered sense. Because these two, of course, are for everybody, male and female. Right. But to accept the fact that I may be rejected by her father, and mm. I'm still going to approach him first and not slip into the DMs Allah or Allah. approach her, right? Mm -hmm. This is bravery, yes, right? Sir. And know, so it's I foundational. That. I know that for a fact. So. You know, he already, Come on, bro. We gave you our sister. You're going to start pulling he out already laundry, knows. bro. I know that. Oh, I man. swear when you're rejected. She's going to see this. You already know, Allah, it was the most intimidating moment of my life, you know, meeting meeting uh, Hajj Ali, Allah, you know? I mean, love her, sounds yeah. so. Yeah, well, like, it was a. Uh, no, just overarching, not right? Our, yeah. Just le leave it there. You know, sabr, to be honest, mm -hmm. without sort of splicing this too far and splitting hairs, sabr is everything. Patience right. is everything, right? right? Mm -hmm. uh, people even think like the deen is half patience and half gratitude. Mm -hmm. And that is true if you mean like patience uh, in hard times mm -hmm. and gratitude in good times. Good but time, in, yeah. in, the, in the wider sense of the word patience is everything. Because mm -hmm. even being patient upon gratitude is a form of patience, right? right. Mm -hmm. right. And so shaja'a ah is like a subset of patience to okay. be able to persevere, to be able to stand your ground, to be able to stay pay, to, to, to be able to uh, remain at your station, right? Mm -hmm. Don't waver. That's what mm -hmm. shaja'a is. It's a subset that Allah singles out in the Quran mm -hmm. with using the word ribat actually. Right. And maybe you, should, you can speak to this. You gave a beautiful khutbah about this, Sheikh Osman, mm -hmm. at the encampments. When Allah Azza wa said in the end of Surah Ali Imran, He said, "Isbiru wa sabiru." So be patient. Mm -hmm. And then He said, "And continue being patient." I'm not talking about a moment's patience. Mm -hmm. Then He said, "Rabitu," and like anchor yourself. Mm -hmm. That's shaja'a, that one, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even though they're subsets of isbiru, because them getting lost in the mix is so dangerous, mm -hmm. Allah singled them out to highlight them. They're mm -hmm. indispensable. You know, it's beautiful. I think it's the isbiru fi nafsik wa sabiru ba'lukum ba'da. Like you, yourself should be patient, but sabiru is to help and assist in making the others patient because within this time frame it is very these calamities can cause one to lose focus and lose Rattle, sight unravel for right sure. subhanallah yeah and unravel exactly and the rabi too is how do you implement that patience with you know standing your ground and um and particularly like we mentioned in the encampments and that's what i want to move on to inshallah both of you all of us here have had an experience at the college campuses. It's funny, we're in the South and we have the West and the East here. In the West and the East. Right. Are we going to throw gang signs now? Exactly. What are we doing? I was literally about to. <laughs> yeah. Then I remember this is a Yaqeen podcast, so I can't do that. <laughs> so, Dr. Osman, what have you seen? If you could start out with the Irvine 11, and we, all, we also have an interview, mashallah, with the brothers in Irvine 11. Check it out on the, on the, on the Yaqeen uh, uh, YouTube channel, inshallah. When you were there during the time of the Irvine 11, what are some things that you see the similarities from then till yeah. the encampus that you see now? Yeah, exactly. Khair. So, um, I mean, the Irvine 11 issue was, uh, was, was a big issue at that time, but it was preceded by a lot of other activism, which I want to speak about, because it's mm -hmm. about Sabiru. Mm -hmm. Like, you're doing this with groups of people. Mm -hmm. So when there was Thabat from the, you know, the, the late 90s and the early 2000s, when the Muslim students on the West Coast began to speak up on behalf of Palestine, we were very small and very few, right? There were like a dozen, maybe two dozen, and everyone else was just looking at you like you're crazy. But we didn't care because it was the haq. So that gave momentum for another generation to come five years later, which is what the Irvine 11 were, and be like, hey, these guys did it. We're going to do it, and we're going to do it even more, mm -hmm. right? And so they were able to excel and even over, you know, do more, you know, uh, of, uh, of exhibit more bravery than we did. Mm -hmm. So in their situation, right, the Israeli ambassador to the United States came to give a speech at the university, and you know, he's spewing his lies, and they said, look, we're gonna do some, uh, you know, we're gonna speak out against him, and because he is who he is, right, all 11 of them were arrested as they spoke. Literally, they just said, like, you're a liar, mm -hmm. and the police grab him, cuff him, take him out, right? Hit him with a misdemeanor, right, take him to court. Make misdemeanor? Oh yeah, take a national spectacle out of it, right, try to ruin their lives, but they knew there were gonna be consequences, but they were like, this is the time to stand up and be brave. Mm -hmm. This is not the time to worry about your dunya, this is not the time to worry about you know, all the other things that shaitan might be getting into your mind. Mm -hmm. And just to continue, 
where we got to today, where the students are in the encampment, that history is what gives them courage to do what they're doing. Allah. Right? So mm. courage is like contagious, Sheikh. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Sajjah is contagious. Sajjah is yeah. contagious, yeah. And no. And perhaps, like, you know, one of the barakah of, of being brave is, is you kind of spreading it to others who have this, like, untapped potential bravery. Allahu Akbar. You get what I mean? That's what we yeah. kind of, like, spew out. Yeah. Somebody stands up and they see you and they're like, I, mean, I could do that too. So maybe we take the example of Abu Bakr, he went to, you know, when Rudul mm -hmm. like Harub Ridda is a great example of this, yeah. right? Where it's like everyone is wavering, you know, the Prophet has died, so, so. Uh, and everyone's like, what should we do? And he's like, look, there's these guys that want to pay zakah, and everyone's like, let's take it easy, let's take it easy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I don't care what you guys think, Allah. I'm gonna do what's right. And everyone else is like, oh, I'm gonna fall into line. He's the bravest of all of them. Mm -hmm. Let's all continue this, right? And that's mm -hmm. why they say, you know, he was one of the most, you know, important figures in the history of Islam, Allah. bringing people back to the faith, right? So no, and that's so important. I mean, when we talk about these characteristics, just to, we've all mentioned it already, but it's important to remind ourselves that these characteristics are transcendent, that it's for a purpose, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that's the anchor to where all of this comes about, yeah. right? And that's what really gives me the, 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 like you said, the untapped potential. Because if I see my Muslim brother or my mentor that's Muslim myself, and we both believe in the creator of the heavens and the earth, that bi'idhnillah, isti'ana billah, yani I'm trusting in Allah and I seek help in him. That is what's going to make me brave to the degree that, you know, subhanAllah, death is not something that's going to make me stop. And that's why mm. it's beautiful, the whole concept of death when the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, mm. you know, akthiru min dhikri hadim, o hadim al that is is to increase yourself in the destroyer of pleasures. Because that is just the stage moving on to another stage, right? It's a, it's a marhala. You're going to move on to another stage. Khalid. So Khalid and Walid. Khalid and Walid. Radiallahu an, right? Radiallahu an. Hey, no. He said, I sought death where you would expect it most. This is like his famous monologue as he was dying. He was reflecting on his life mm -hmm. as a warrior. He said, of course not sought death. Obviously, this is not suicidal ideation. Right, right, Islam is not a death cult. These tired uh, sort of accusations, we've given tired. enough disclaimers for them. Let's get to the inspirational part of this. Uh, we don't fear death. How exactly. do you defeat a people who mm -hmm. don't fear death? Mm -hmm. It's something that has been surfacing and deserves to be celebrated, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he said, as he was dying, how crazy it is that I have basically thrown myself in harm's way throughout my life where death would be expected most mm -hmm. and I never died. He said, and here I am today there's not a, a spot left on my body, except that there's a scar from a arrow or a spear or a sword. And yet here I am dying on my cushion, on my bed, the way a lamb dies in its pen. <laughs> then he said, Fama namat jubana. He said, <laughs> may the cowards never find any sleep. Like you lost Allah. so much sleep <laughs> over your life or your livelihood <laughs> and it didn't lengthen your life. And I didn't lose any sleep over this, and look at me anyway. I still didn't die there, right? What hit you wasn't going to miss you, what missed you wasn't going to hit you, and if you die, believe anything else, you don't qualify for paradise. Can you imagine? Like Islam requires you, requires you to armor yourself with confidence in his destiny, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what bravery does. Bravery is confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know that you're, you're standing up for something that is much more than this physical. His physical life and that's what makes it so beautiful can mm. someone without bravery have true tawakkul that's a is that a is mm. that a question we could pose or no can someone without like, bravery have trust in like, allah you trust in allah mm. can you truly trust in allah without like because it is it requires uh bravery to say you know what no i'm i'm not gonna get poor no i'm not gonna die right now no i'm not whatever is written is gonna happen to me right that's what tawakkul is so, mm -hmm. like, maybe we could explore some of that interconnection. Yeah, it's know? interesting because... Because Tawakkul is a big part of... Yeah, Tawakkul is confidence. That, it's, it's, yeah. it's confidence in Allah's beautiful names and attributes yes. that they will manifest when He chooses, right? Exactly. But then, I guess, and y'all can elaborate on this, the manifestation of that trust in different times will require bravery to stand up to those that may question your decision. Uh, if that is, for like, for instance, you know, the husband, when you first get married and, mm. you know, you may be asked questions by not the wife, maybe other family members around and say, how could you do this? Are you going to do this? And the reason you're doing it is because mm. you trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not an overzealous type trust where you're doing tawakul, where it's mm. not something that is, um, I don't want to say not logical, but it is not, let's say, 51 to 100% reasonable decision. It will, in my humble opinion, Allah knows best, mm -hmm. it will require a level of bravery. So there has to be yes. bravery when it comes to implementation of that tawakkul and that trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think the idea of bravery being evaluated after the onset of fear, 
is very valuable, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So for example, we don't believe in superstitions in Islam, right? Yeah. Uh, we have good assumptions of Allah always. We don't care about seeing a black cat, we don't care about walking under ladders, we don't care if mm. there's a 13th floor or the Friday lands <laughs> on the number 13 on some Gregorian calendar <laughs> Friends, or, or a Hijri one, right? Yeah. But Ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he said something very profound. Mm. He said, al-tiyara, which is like to, to, to notice something that is interpreted by everyone as a bad omen and so it sort of like makes mm. you pause, mm -hmm. right? Like a, a discomfort, an anxious pause. He said, this happens to everybody. He said, as for the believer, yudhibu habit tawakkul. Mm -hmm. He insists on dismissing it with tawakkul, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And also the hadith narrated by Ahmed, rahimahullah, uh, where the Prophet sallallahu said, <laughs> shaitan, the devil, of course, he sort of incites fear all the time, mm -hmm. right? Evokes and elicits fear. He said, he sits on every path for the son of Adam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He decides to become a Muslim. And he tells him, you're going to leave the religion, religion of your fort. So he defies him and becomes Muslim. Mm -hmm. And then he decides to migrate. He's going to say, you're going to leave your homeland and your there livelihood. You and he defies him and, and you know, uh, migrates. And then uh, the time for jihad comes and he tells him, she's going to remarry. And your mm -hmm. kids are going to be, or and he defies him and he does it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so the issue of, it's going to hit, right? It's get, mm -hmm. You're going to get some tough questions when you knock on the girl's door, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But I, I have to, shaja'a, I'm going to sort of put my best foot forward, put my trust in Allah, and I'm going to brave the storm. This mm -hmm. is, I think... Yeah. People, you know, they, they have this idea of like, oh, is that the answer to my istikhara? Like any sort of friction or discomfort or like, uh, is that a bad sign? Right. That's where bravery is tested. It's after you take mm. that step. Yeah, that's amazing. Another question. And I want you to speak about what you've seen at the camps as well. But, you know, subhanAllah, mm. I think there's a misconception when we speak about bravery as though there, is, there was no fear that preceded the bravery. But was, Musa was scared. You know, oh, khafa an yafrut alayla o an yatgha. Right. You know, I fear that they that they would transgress the bounds. Right. Mm -hmm. So is it if someone is scared, is that unmanly? What do you think of that? If someone is brave. So let's say that someone is brave and they're a brave person. Let's say Khalid Walid. I would say, OK, he was fearless. Or was there an element of fear? Is it OK to have fear as a brave person? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that mm. and I think you mentioned it well. I mean, Musa is the exemplar for us in the Quran. Mm. The words that are used over and over in almost every situation, if you go to the Qasas, right, and many mm. other ones, mm. the situation, Allah says, mm. like, it's specifically put there to say that, look, in this situation, Musa had fear, but then it's always followed up by, but he still did the right thing. Mm. Right? He still did the right thing over and over and over. So I would say that uh, fear is a human, uh, you know, emotion that one cannot escape. Mm -hmm. Right, and so rather than think that like you know eliminating fear is a goal, actually it's not. It's overcoming the fear, mm -hmm. which is the goal, and that is the sign of tawakkul in many cases. Right, I have the trust in Allah that this fear that I have, if I put my trust in Him, the outcome is going to be good. Right, the outcome the outcome will be in my favor in this life or in the next. Right, mm -hmm. we're not trying to eliminate fear. It's not the goal, mm -hmm. but when you're in the situation that is fearful, you will have far less fear than probably the people around you who might want to run away. Right. Mm. And it increases. It's a muscle. It's, yeah, exactly. It's a muscle. Yeah. You know, I'm yeah. acting like I'm, I'm Mr. Brave over here. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. It's a muscle, it's like, yeah, you gotta work it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I, I, I remember one time one of the Mashaikh, he said to me something that was really cool. He said there was a guy in a Muslim army, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, like, this is, bravery is not just about sort of battle, uh, the battles, even though mm -hmm. the, the Muslim man especially mm -hmm. should be battle ready and ready to protect his family more so than anyone else, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that hinges on him and is expected of him. But he's in, this, in the army and he's like panicking. Like, I really hope this war doesn't happen. Like, I hope, you know, like they send a messenger, an envoy, emissary saying, you know, we're calling it off. We're going to do it after Christmas, not right now. <laughs> or something. He says, and like every day they're inching closer and closer and he's just fretting at this point. And he says, like, they send a, a volley of arrows from enemy lines and it just misses his face. And it lands by his, you know, right behind him and kills a snake that was like camouflaged in the sand right under him. Wow. So, so it just hit him like, wow, why, 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 why all this fear? Like mm. it was his time, not mine. mine. So let's not over, you know, calculate this. We're going to be a little bit pragmatic, mm. right? But let's not over calculate. And little by little, you know, I remember Dr. Muhammad Ismail Muqaddim, mm. one of our uh, mashayikh and psychiatrist actually, he says, he used to always tell the students of knowledge, never belittle uh, anyone 
because perhaps Allah put a certain person through so many bouts of fear in their life, even like a trader. He subjected himself to bankruptcy so many times, perhaps unintentionally, of course. And so he developed more bravery and trust in God than someone who's picking it up out of theoreticals in the books and giving lectures about it. Yeah. Mm, it's about mm. living it, living it. So, yeah, what about, it's about the odds as well, you know, because mm. sometimes there's fear, but there's also intellect. Like a person can understand the repercussions of being brave in this situation, right? Okay, mm. this is going to happen to me. I know this is going to happen to me. I know uh, I might get denied my credit. I might get fired from my job. I might go go to jail. I want I, like this might happen to me. What? balances that out okay. and in my opinion it's always it's always the akhirah it balances everything out mm-hmm. the moment you understand the reward from allah mm-hmm. that's it if everything should like it should tip the scale mm-hmm. you know because the other day i was t- i was talking a few shabab okay um and i had alhamdulillah the opportunity to speak in uh one of the protests here in utd mm-hmm. so they went and they so alhamdulillah i prepared hamburgatis we were talking about university of Texas yeah down. so we made a hundred mm-hmm. hamburgatis and then we went out uh, to feed them there in the, in the college campus, Excellent. right? And just to, just to feed them. And then when I, I was on the way, and then they're like, oh, they took a bunch of our, our, our like, you know, mm-hmm. our, the Shabab, you know, they took them to, to prison. I'm like, to oh, jail, man. Yeah. They took them to jail. Prison, yeah. They took them to, not prison. They <laughs> took them to jail, right? <laughs> so I'm like, they're in jail? Where at? Like, so like, everybody, the protest is gone. I'm like, so there's nobody there? Mm-hmm. They're like, yeah, they're all in... They're all over there in like McKinney, where, McKinney, where yeah. that, that was happening. So we went out and Sheikh Abdullah, you were there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. so we went out, Alhamdulillah, and um, it, was, it was pretty cool. I was talking to one of the Shabab, like, you know, one of the greatest ta'amulat that I had there was when the Prophet said so the nice. greatest form of striving for Allah hmm. is a word of truth in the face of an oppressor, yeah. right? And we could imagine striving in all of its forms, and how tiring, and how straining, and how stressful it could be, right? Mm-hmm. And how it could take a toll on everything in, in you, right? But, but a word was equivalent to all that and greater. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, just knowing that makes a, it gives counsel, like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going to do this, but I'm doing the greatest form of striving. Right. Like, what I'm doing is the best thing I can be doing right now. Right, right. right? So, so I think knowledge, just yeah. ilm and, and just, Knowing what the reward is. Knowledge and then knowing what the reward is and that remembrance of the reward and knowing that that reward may not come in this life. Yeah. And the reward yeah, of the next true. life, khayrun <laughs> right? It's, 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 true. it's much more everlasting. So, Sheikh Muhammad, what have you, what would you tell the parents of these youth in the encampments, right? Because I've been in situations, you know, what's going on now, you know, the son is like, my dad won't let me go out. Because he fears that I, you know, you know, my, I'll lose my, my opportunity to continue to complete my education. But I, this is how I want to exemplify my religion. This is what I mm. feel that I can do. I feel that I haven't been, I haven't done anything, and this is an opportunity to, to do that. Um, what would you say to that parent, and what would you say to that student? You know, before I even say that, uh, allow me to say that these sons and daughters, mm. these. Uh, uh, youth that are in the encampments, and mm-hmm. of course there are faculty there and there are community mm-hmm. members there. Mm-hmm. Uh, th- you started the episode saying how like we're East Coast and West Coast, both in the encampments on both sides of the country and things like this. Mm-hmm. But the, the truth is that pales in its bravery mm-hmm. compared to what these youth are doing, first and foremost, mm-hmm. because uh, our careers are not on the line as sort of <laughs> religious leaders in Muslim communities right. by showing up in these places, right? we might actually get a raise or something. <laughs> like, oh man, and he's into social justice, right? Like my stock might actually climb from this. Uh, but these youth, are, are their lives are just taking off and they are sort of uh, a contingent that is in the mainstream, that is on the cusp of being in mm. corporate America or whatever it's going to be. Their, their livelihoods, presumptively, right? Their careers, everything is on the line and they're doing it. And there's a lot of reasons why they're doing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, of them is the, the sense of purpose, even if you're not Muslim. Mm-hmm. Like the sense of purpose is huge, right? right? Uh, and I think the vacuum of purpose in modern life, the very felt flatness of the secular age is a big part of that, right. but for another time. Irrespective though, uh, being young 
makes you braver than the elderly. The elderly yes. would not accept the change, the bravery it would take to get cancelled by yeah. following the Prophet mm. It was the youth, right? It's the youth, yeah. And so this is expected of the youth and mm. extremely brave of the youth. And we want to tell the parents, don't try to fix it, mm. right? Mm -hmm. I, I sort of tried to lean in a little bit as respectfully as I could to the parents in Jamal last week. And I said to them, the kids aren't doing anything wrong. You know, our deen uh, celebrates uh, those who speak truth to power. And the country in which we live enshrines in its constitution, right, this right to assemble and, and speak freely, right? Mm -hmm. And the people are also all out there. Like, it's not just the Muslims, right? The Jews that are against genocide and the Jews that are for peace and the faculty are out there. And the, 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 the ethnic minorities who have, you know, great economic challenges usually ahead of them, right, mm -hmm. are out there. And the 70 and 80 year olds who helped, you know, push the needle forward until Vietnam became unfavorable came out 50 years later and they're out there. Mm -hmm. So Fine. how can the Muslim who believes that Allah is a razzaq, is the provider, the mm -hmm. ultimate provider, mm -hmm. not be out there? And so it, it would be a concern mm -hmm. that we should have that we don't condemn those trying to silence them. That's the real problem. Mm -hmm. And I said to them that Imam Ahmad, mm -hmm. he was asked by one of the prison guards, mm -hmm. you make dua against the zalimeen, the oppressors, and awan uh, al-zalimeen, the assistants, the aides, the advocates of the oppressors. He said, am I one of them? He's like a jail guard. Mm -hmm. He's at the door. He said to him, no, 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 the one who aids the oppressor is the guy who tailors his clothes and cooks his food. You're one of the oppressors. <laughs> you're not category two, you're category one, right? Wow. Like, so may Allah protect us from ever being that. That was the promise that Musa alayhi salam made to Allah. Because of the great favor you've conferred upon me, I will never be a supporter, right? And silencing those doing the right thing is in fact supporting mm -hmm. those doing the wrong That's thing. A very so I tried to knowledge. communicate that as best as I could. If I can add to that, Please. I, mean, I think for um, parents to realize that the academic Islam is not what really lights the fire of faith in people's hearts. Allah. It's that experiential Islam. Right? And so the experience of being on a campus is of the most important uh, identity solidifying moments of one's life. If a parent does not allow their kid to participate, they are stripping them of an opportunity to really latch onto a firm Islamic identity because mm. they will never forget this for the rest of their lives. Yes. Right? I mean, I, I'll be personally in my own life, you know, it was my college activism that really lit my, my faith on fire, made me realize Islam as a living, vibrant religion that actually is here to change the world. Mm -hmm. right? It's not just something for me to go into my, my bedroom and go do dhikr and Quran. Right. All the ayat that they're hearing, like in the durus and all these things, they're all theoretical yeah. until you get out there and you realize Okay, this is the real world. Mm. And all these ayats that were 1,400 years ago, I'm seeing them in front of my eyes. Subhanallah. Right? And so that, that yaqeen that you get, right? You, you cannot replace that with sitting in a classroom and any other experience. So it's not about not sitting in a classroom, but it's about allowing them to do both, right? And I go back and I think about the Prophet ﷺ and, and the Sahaba, the Muhajirun, they were made, the young ones especially, right? The Prophet ﷺ allowed them to be in some of these circumstances. Like Abdullah ibn Saud, when he goes to the Kaaba and he recites the Quran out loud, he's a young man, and the Sahaba did not see him as very physically strong, mm -hmm. but he goes and he recites Surah Rahman and he gets beat up for it. And he comes back and they're like, you know, we told you to get beat up. And he's like, I've mm -hmm. never had more contempt for the enemies of Allah than today. And he goes, if you want me to, I'll go again tomorrow. Allah. And they're like, look, like you, you made them angry. You did your job mm -hmm. for today, right? Mm -hmm. But I just think about his, the, the rest of his life, when he becomes who he becomes, right? And, mm -hmm. and you know, the, the famous Abdul al Mas'ud. Mm -hmm. It's that experience as a young man in Mecca that has given them a certain identity that yes. cannot be shaken, right? Yes. And so we don't want to take those away from our youth, right? Yeah, because subhanAllah, as, as we're seeing, and as we've seen, subhanAllah, they feel, I mean, all of us, to a certain degree, have felt a little helpless in what is going on now. So when I see that, that effort, I mean, countless times I've been asked before these encampments, is like, what can I do? I feel horrible watching what's going on on television, and I can't do anything about it, right? without going and taking any means that is not conducive to Muslims here or Muslims there, but trying to find that middle course without just being someone that is qa'id or not, and not qa'id <laughs> at the same time, right? We're finding that middle course. And mm -hmm. subhanAllah, the lack of bravery. Okay, let's say that the Muslims didn't go out in these encampments. What would you, 
because there's a level of bravery. I mean, the level of fear that we've seen mm -hmm. to where they actually went out and said, you know, they looked at their friend, are you going to go? Okay, let's go. It's been that moment where it's like, let's go. Yep, yep. Yeah. Just hypothetically speaking, or not even hypothetically speaking, there are probably still some out there that are not, that may be condemned going out there, for example. And as you mentioned, that could be, and if I hear on what you mean, it could be someone that is assisting in condemning those that are trying to manifest a religion in a positive, conducive fashion. The lack of this bravery, what would you see? I mean, what would it look like? The lack of the manifestation of this bravery. Yeah, that, no, I can speak about it in our own community in Irvine. I mean, so like Muhammad mentioned, like it's these youth who have put a lot on the line mm. and they're being very brave, but the success of the encampments depends on the bravery of the community to support them. Mm -hmm. So in our situations, and you're seeing, we saw it at UCLA, I was there at UCLA when the mm -hmm. police rioted, right? And we had to go out there and many other campuses. At UC Irvine, the, the faculty themselves and other um, people on the campus said if it was not for the Muslim community and the Muslim men on the campus surrounding the encampment to protect them, this would have been gone, right? So that's, the, that's, that's what's at stake here. If we sit at home, it's like, you know, my yeah. paycheck, you know, and this and that, and my sleep. Mm -hmm. They would have been overrun, you said. They would have been overrun. And what is that loss? Possibly hundreds of millions of dollars of divestment money, right? Changing mm -hmm. of the public narrative, right? So this is not like a small, like the cost of not being brave is, is tremendous. It's tremendous. Right? Mm -hmm. On our brothers and sisters in yeah. Faisal, right? You know, I mean, it, I'm literally talking about billions of dollars of money and weapons industry that we can divert mm -hmm. if we stand strong and we're brave. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, right, then we're going to bear the consequences of that, right? Mm -hmm. you know how we're always thinking, uh, Dr. Osman, how, how we can help our brothers and sisters there who are grieving, who are mm. sad, who lost loved ones. How many videos I've seen on social media, on like different social media outlets, mm. of brothers and sisters in Gaza coming out and thanking exactly. the yeah, brothers, was, just uh, gonna come with yeah. a smile on their face. They probably lost 60 people in their family, and they're That's smiling true. because they see you protesting or encamping because of them. Mm. It, like, isn't that enough of like, okay, you can't send the dollar, you can't yes. guarantee anything's getting there, but at least you're making them happy. They'll be, <laughs> I don't love it. Yeah, on, it's I mean, there. You know that, that hadith from the Prophet says yeah. that, oh, that smiling is charity? Like, oh, we belittle it, right? Oh, and then you see these Allah. kids holding up the sign saying, thank you so much, UCLA, yeah. Columbia, NYU. Oh, it's like, it's what, what type amazing. of sadaqah this is, right? Well, like, I'm going to be totally yeah. honest, transparent. Yeah. Like, I saw one of them, and I was yeah. sitting there with my family. I saw yeah. that. I said, get up, let's go. Yeah, exactly. Like, when I saw that, I showed my daughter and my son. It's I said, done, we're, yeah. we're going. We're, let's, let's go. Yeah, and they appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so much of yeah. that. And just imagine, imagine their dua. You know, the dua of the people who are being tested mm. it, and the dua of the mazloom, the oppressed, is the closest dua mm. to Allah. Mm. Right? And you know, in the hadith, there's no hijab. Yeah. There's no cover between it and Allah. Mm. And imagine out of everyone, they're making from their dua for the people that are mm. coming out for them. So, mm. It's like just by being there, you're automatically yep. oh, subhanallah. Yeah, receiving you all those da'wah. Yeah. You know? That's a very, it's very like, beautiful perspective. It's like as if that's where the rahmah of Allah is, 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 is yeah. being subhanallah. bestowed. Subhanallah. And, and the other thing I think a lot about is that what is, what is the consequence? In many ways, it's, it's unknown, but we have mm. precedent. Right? When Musa mm. salam, is taking Bani Israel and saying, go into the sacred land, what do they say? Mm. Like, you guys go, we're going to be cowards. So what is the punishment? <laughs> 40 years. 40 years, right? And cowardice has a punishment too. It does, right? Yeah. It does. And we may not, yeah. and yeah. Quran's not going to come down and tell us that we're being punished for it. Mm -hmm. But how much longer will Palestine be occupied if in this moment we don't get up and do something about it, right? Mm -hmm. and, and we don't know the answer to that. All we know is that, Ya Rabbi, I'm going to throw myself out there. I don't care about the consequences. I don't believe that most of the things we're being threatened with are real. Because that's how shaitan works, right? Mm. He's going to threaten you with all these things. But the reality is almost none of them. So if we go back to Ravine 11, they threaten them with, you're never going to get a job, and you're going to get a misdemeanor, and you're going to get this. Guess what? They go to Harvard Law School, right? They go to University of Minnesota doing their PhD. They run mm. AMP. They work at Google. They go here. They go there. Like, Allah shows us these things just to be like, oh, Muslims, you have no excuse. Mm. Right? All these theoretical fears. Let me show you a living example of how... <laughs> <laughs> There's no fear upon you in these situations. Right? This is beautiful. And if Gaza is showing that bravery, yeah. how can we not? Of course. Yeah. I mean, that's where we're getting this inspiration, right? I mean, I, and the biggest cowards in this whole thing are the, the, the ones who failed to just come out and have us just say a statement. One mm. statement, you know, of like just being a human, right? Just yeah. that's it. And that, this is all done just with one. Well, there's a bigger coward. Oh, you know, there's a bigger yeah. Yeah, it's a Zionist. Who will mm -hmm. not even go out 
right? Unless they have police officers behind them to protect them, right, from counter protesting, right? So, <laughs> so they are the biggest cowards. So how do you fear a coward? Right? Yeah. That's something which is not within our our our, 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 aqidah. our aqidah. You know, you know, like using the term Judaism very widely, of course. Zionism by testimony of so many Jews mm -hmm. and Jewish scholars right. is a departure from Judaism, right? Mm -hmm. So at least that much without getting into sort of theological discussion that's out of context here mm -hmm. uh, Look at what it breeds, right? It, it, it breeds uh, This Zionist paranoia, right? They live mm -hmm. with the victimhood mentality mm -hmm. and so many of these like uh, mutations, right? Spiritual sort of diseases that latch on to people when they let their faith get compromised Mm. I'm not even pointing at Zionists anymore. I'm telling mm. you the Quran mm. said, be careful of mm. becoming th that person. Right. The mm. person mm. whose faith falls into shambles and therefore they are captives of their fears. They miss out on this world, they miss out on the next, right? Mm. That is the danger. Like bravery breeds faith and cowardice can actually eat away at your faith. Mm. It can erode your faith. Wow. There's so many ayat in the Quran about you know, uh, for example, nifaq, the disease of nifaq, mm -hmm. hypocrisy, which is sort of a faith as it's dying, right? يحسبون كل صيحة عليهم Right, they presume that every noise is about them. They're always looking mm -hmm. over their shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. The other ayah that, that says, uh, they let the Prophet Sallallahu go fight. It wasn't just Musa and his people, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes in time the Prophet Sallallahu even Some in the water. presence of the Prophet, meaning everyone's got to make their own decision. You can mm -hmm. even be surrounded by the Prophet, it's not going to help you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They said after Uhud what? لو كنا في بيوتنا، right؟ لو كنتم في بيوتكم، you know؟ لبرز الذين كتب عليهم القصر إلى مضاجعهم. Even if you remained home, those destined to die would have went and met their place of death. You would have went out there for some business. You would have went out there to use the bathroom. That's where you're supposed to die, right? And so the fear needs to be shaken off on some level. Yes, we're going to be pragmatic. Yes, we're going to sort of try to measure things as best we can. And I also, I always need to say, I don't. Categorically classify as cowardly or cowardice not going to a protest. I do uh, conceive of, mm -hmm. but not to be involved at all in this moment, I think requires some honest introspection, introspection. and scrutiny for every single one of us. Yeah, I mean, the process of even saw refuge from the Jibba Nyali. I can build on your point here. It's, uh, there's a difference also between one who was going to go on their own accord and for different reasons didn't go, mm -hmm. but then the Muslims have gone. Uh, our brothers and our sisters, and then our sisters are in need and they're being attacked. And then, and this is a whole different issue now, where it's like, I need to be brave enough to defend my sisters, even if I wasn't gonna go to that protest, also. Like, yeah. Even if I don't agree and yeah, even if I don't agree correctly. It, right? Mm -hmm. And I think this is such an important like issue for us. Like, like this is part of our, like, of our, of our, of our manliness in Islam, right? It's part of our being, you know, qawwamun, right? Of, mm -hmm. of, of being able to protect our women. Mm -hmm. And in a moment's time, like if, you know, if sister says, you know, I'm in need, Right. This is what happened at UCLA, right? You know, we got text messages at midnight. At, you know, people were saying, our sisters fear, are fearing for their lives. Right? And so hundreds of Muslim men literally drive an hour or two hours away Allah. because a, a woman has said, hey, I'm, I'm in fear, right? And I think of that story of uh, Mu'tasima, right? Yeah, yeah. Or Qaynuqa. Yeah, or Qaynuqa, right? You know? And yeah. this is why these stories are so important because they yeah. give us um, like these roadmaps for who we are, right? Mm -hmm. you know, like who, who do we want to be like? Right? And so you have, you know, Mu'tasim Billah, you know, famous a sister, one sister was like, oh, Mu'tasim, come and help me because she's wrongfully imprisoned. He's like, I'm going to send a whole army after you, right, you know? Mm -hmm. So we need to revive this in our spirit because or else we got sitcoms, or we got all this other, you know, unbefitting behavior of men that's being promoted everywhere. And, uh, and we need to go back to who we are, right? Yeah, so, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, you, you think about it, you ask the question, I mean, even to make it general is... Uh, okay, and you mentioned, you touched on that before, and Ibn Qayyim mentions that as well, the Shuja is the one that helps and defend someone that they don't even know, right? They're generous mm -hmm. with, yep. their, with, their, with their strength and with being honorable and, and mm -hmm. fighting the oppression, as Musa did, alayhi salam, with the Qutbiyah, mm -hmm. and therefore he fled to Even to someone you don't ag agree with. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, forget the mentioned. sister doing what she believes is right at a protest. Like, as a Muslim, if I were to see uh, a woman being assaulted on the street, that man maybe isn't even her husband. Uh, she may not be dressed properly at all. All of those are not considerations at that yep. moment, that right. particular moment, yes. right? And this is important because particularly in the East Coast, I'm gonna give you a situation that happened to me. I was headed to uh, Masjid Taqwa in Brooklyn. I was like, man, I'm gonna go Masjid Taqwa, see Siraj for the first time. Inshallah. So as I'm taking, I think I was leaving Harlem and I was, I was heading there, I'm on the subway, man, and I'm sitting there 
and there's some 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 females sitting right in front of me, you mm -hmm. know, facing. You know, I'm from the south. I'm not used to the subway, right? Um, and there's but there's a guy standing above them, holding onto the rail, mm -hmm. onto the uh, the post here. You can tell that he's high as a kite. He is like so high. His pants. On his spirituality, pants. you mean? Well, <laughs> 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 a high on you, man. <laughs> His guy was intoxicated. Yeah. As the subway's stopping and moving, stopping and going. Oh, mind you, this guy is, you know, his pants are sagging and he has a backpack, right? And as the subway's stopping, he's like leaning over. He can barely hold himself up. Everybody can see, I mean, Ray Charles can tell this guy's high, right? So <laughs> I don't know if the generation knows. Ray, Ray Charles, Charles is a blind, <laughs> just a Stevie Wonder, he's a blind pianist, you know. As as the, the subway stopped and going stop, you get the, the women are like this, the girls are like, <laughs> I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, okay, if he falls on what is in his back? My main concern is what is in his back? Because if something goes down, I have to do I have to do something. Right? Nobody else I'm a Muslim, but I have to do something. Allah does. Yeah, Allah does. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, what I mean. So he's, he, he, he eventually falls on the girls. Mm. And I'm hoping he doesn't, he wasn't vulgar. He didn't become vulgar or anything like that. Falls on the girls. And it's so funny because the girl is just sitting like this. She's like so still. She doesn't want to move. And he's just totally out of it. So I say, hey, man, just come on. Just, just, just get up. If he gets vulgar, if he gets violent, whatever happens, happens. Because in my mind, I'm like, what is in his bag? But then I was, as I was leaving, I was thinking to myself, you know, man mata duni malahi who who shahid who who dies protecting his honor, his family, his money, then he is a martyr. In those situations, the Muslim, particularly even in that area, when we look at the history of Masjid Taqwa, even even the history of Masjid Taqwa, right? Mm -hmm. How they had to stand up for oppression and willing to fight those that were, that were, you know, that were bringing the community down and not helping and improving the people. You know, the Muslim, it's important. Yeah, yeah, they that cleaned they, out all the drug dealers. They cleaned out all the drug dealers. With uh, physical therapy. <laughs> with the yeah. dawah, right? That's what it was. <laughs> physical therapy. Physical therapy. <laughs> That's what we call it, man. But <laughs> Actually, you know, let me tell you. The man who led that project, Ali Abdul Karim, he was the head of security Minister Taqwa, Imam Siraj al his right-hand man. Uh, this man was an icon of the Allah and bravery. Allah preserve. Rahimahullah. Allah yurhamu. Allah have mercy on him. We buried him last year. This man, when we sued the NYPD for discriminatory policing uh, a few years prior, he came to me and said to me, Muhammad, when your father was wrongly accused after 9-11, actually before 9-11, they were actually accused in the 1993 World Trade Center bombings. Imam Siraj as well, was one of mm. the so-called unindicted co-conspirators, and my father was with him. Mm, and he said, I was there in their courtroom, and subhanAllah, and I fast forward 30 years, he's standing by me in the courtroom. Subhanallah. Right? He said, I'll tell you one thing, Muhammad, don't ever let them see fear in your eyes. And mm. Alhamdulillah, like I, I prayed my istikhara, and I knew it was a very, very difficult thing to, to embark on this lawsuit, to file this lawsuit because of many factors. But he said to me, don't change nothing. Don't shave your beard, don't walk any different, don't act suspect. And he shared with me a story. Mm. He said to me, I, he, he actually has his own private firm as a private investigator. Uh, he, he clocked someone following him around a few blocks. So he pulls over, acts like he's going to a store, and he loops around and he, face, he stands in front of the guy. And the guy's like, yo, man, be easy, be easy, stand down. He's also the head of the ninjutsu program, Masjid Zakhla. He's a like, killer martial artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, the guy's like, yo, be easy. Listen, I don't know who you are. I don't know if you're feds. I don't know if you're Musad. I don't know who you are. He's like, listen, man, just calm down. Lower your voice. I, like, I just want to tell you one thing. You're not my God. Do you understand that? Mm. And the guy was horrified by how mm. unflinching Ali was. Right? Rahimahullah. This is important. That's why it's anchored in faith. Yes, you know, when, when Sa'id ibn Jubair was told by Hajjaj, Rahimahullah, like, my life is in your hands. He said, if I believed that, I wouldn't have worshipped anybody but you. Mm. Like, don't get it twisted, because I don't have it twisted. You're not my God, mm. right? Yeah. I have a duty to my God, and he is worthy of my fear. Yeah. SubhanAllah, SubhanAllah. So with that, I mean, that example, and of our companions, radiallahu anhu, maratabi tabi'in, rahimahumullah, you mentioned this earlier. It's not something that just comes haphazardly. It comes immediately. If you're someone that has not trained yourself or conditioned yourself with the worship of Allah, compliance in the religion, practicing the sharia, when that time comes, you may be brave, but it may be 
in mm. Nuhush, mm. right? Mm. And that hadith is very important yeah. as well. Mm. You know, the one that fights just so it can be said that he is brave, mm. right? But rather, it's to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think that distinction is very, very important, particularly for the one that believes in, the, believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and believes in the creator of the heavens and the earth, that that is the motivation and the destination, right? Mm -hmm. So when you see someone like our Sheikh, mashallah, you know, that lack of fear, and then you can, you can feel that energy, you know, it's something, particularly speaking to our Shabab now, that remember that it's for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tie that what you're doing and finding meaning and purpose, tie it to doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that he has given you the faculties to do it and continuing on, bismillah, for the name, with the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like testosterone is something that's, that like, we don't talk about a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a necessary component of men. And actually we've been seeing actually for the last 30 years, uh, if not longer, that you know, young men in this society have lower levels of testosterone, which is we found related to the lifestyle, the diet, the lack of exercise, mm -hmm. right? The sitting and playing video games all day long. So, so much, like when you want to be brave, but you live a lifestyle that's anti-bravery, like you're not gonna be able to enact the bravery, right? Mm, so, okay. again, this goes back to preparation, right? Do you wow. live this active lifestyle where you are exercising, you are running, you're lifting weights, you're playing sports, you're doing competitive sports. All this develops a natural testosterone. Wow. So you're, when, you, when you're in a situation that you need it, like it's ready to go. Again, all those parents who are just like, you know, sit down and do your homework all day long, that's the path to success in life. This is a recipe for disaster, right? Wow. Mm. Yeah. You know what's interesting? I read that Ibn Khaldun said. Mm. He said that people that live out in the country are braver than city people. <laughs> and mm. I, thought, I thought I was surprised. He's like, yeah, that's because the people in the city depend on, like, the government, right, to protect them, mm. to, to maintain everything for them, to guarantee that they're going to get their, 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 you know, their risk and everything, their safety and whatnot. He's like, but the one who lives out rural, you know, got to fend for themselves, got to always be prepared and to defend themselves so they develop more bravery than the city people. What do you, you think that has anything to do with that, Sheikh? I do, I, and I think if we go Cali. even deeper, uh, yeah. I would say that it's, it actually breeds a different type of tawakkul. Think about somebody who lives in a city and you get like a paycheck every two weeks. Mm. Mm. How different is my guaranteed paycheck and then I have my AC and I control my, my temperature, I have my GPS and I control everything. Like this level of control and certainty over your life uh, is very different than somebody who lives out in a situation where like it's rough. Yeah. I don't know if it's gonna be hot today, if it's gonna be cold today. I don't know if I'm gonna make any money. I don't know if my crops are gonna grow this season. A if they're bear, not gonna grow. A coyote just exactly, out of right? <laughs> so all this breeds a different sense of, of tawakkul, number one. And number two is acceptance of what happens, mm. right? Like in the city life, you become so accustomed to things being a certain way. You go to the grocery store, the apples are out of stock, you throw a fit. Right? Because <laughs> right? you've been used to apples just always so being true. there. Rather than be like, no, apples are seasonal. Sometimes they grow, sometimes they don't grow. Right? Or I'm doing you know, business and some days I make money, some days I don't make money. So I, I would say it's not just um, city life, but it's more of the technology around us. The dependency on this technology is what yes. makes us weak. Yeah. It makes us like, uh, intellectually weak, it makes us spiritually weak, it makes us physically weak. Right? Sometimes the notion of self-selecting hardship is a really important part of developing uh, you know, the type of bravery that we're speaking about, right? And I said self-selecting, that's why we go and we do things like, like martial arts, right? You know, mm -hmm. Beat me up in a controlled setting, right? Mm -hmm. Let me go camping mm -hmm. for 20 miles in the, you know, in, in the forest, right? And you put yourself in these situations. So when you're, when, you're, when you're in that situation, not by choice, you can deal with it, right? Exactly. Right? As Omar ibn Khattab said, right? You know, rough it for good times don't always last, right? Mm -hmm. you, you train it like a muscle, right? So mm -hmm. coming back to this whole issue, if we talk about what do we want to do with our kids, right? Our young boys in our community. We need to put them through these hardships, just like Allah Azza wa Jal put the Anbiya through these hardships. Exactly. Right? They couldn't be grown up in the palace, right? You grow up in the palace, you're going to end up being soft. And mm. you get out, you need to rough it, you need to be a shepherd, right? And then when you come back, you can deal with, like, you know, the situation that you have at hand, right? Mm -hmm. So part of, I think, being a good father, being a good murabbi, being a good mm. youth director, being a good mother, whatever it might be, is saying, I want to mm. put my kids in hardship get them out of the sedentary life, get them out of the, the comfort, because they need to build these men up, right? So. Right. Mm. No, no, subhanAllah. It's beautiful how you connected the testosterone or lack thereof with a potentiality to lack of bravery. Mm. You know, subhanAllah. Mm. It's kind of something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the manifestation of His creation, has put within us to prepare us for certain situations, but we still have that responsibility of nurturing it in a way that is conducive for our development for, for ourselves and for those around us those that we know and those that we don't. Like every virtue, by the way, bravery mm. being a virtue, a foundational virtue, it always lies in the perfect middle between two extremes, right? So mm. with bravery, there's recklessness. 
uh, presumed bravery, when it's just like yes, someone is reckless, and there's cowardice, right? So that was important. Right. I, I really appreciate the, the issue of uh, considering the holistic approach, right? The, the luxury, you know, good times create weak men type thing, mm -hmm. weak people in general, right? Uh, and then also outsourcing our security to the state, outsourcing our provision to the supply chain. That creates an illusion of control that puts you under this notion that I don't need to prep for hard times. Mm -hmm. So actually there's a really good book on that so I don't spend any time on it, uh, King of the Castle. Uh, he speaks a lot about how the Industrial Revolution has revolutionized the world view of people in a very dangerous mm -hmm. way. It sets them up for because it's just not reliable. I mean, the protests have shown us, again, people who believe the, pro the police are here to protect us. They're not here to protect us. They're here mm -hmm. to protect the state, right? They're actually very happy to attack us uh, as long as it, it suits the needs of the state, right? So literally we saw mm -hmm. this, right, again at UCLA, where like, police watched 150 thugs beat up and try you know, to attack with chemical weapons, all these things like, you know, college shoot students, fireworks right? at them. shoot fireworks, you know, bear spray, mace. Actually, we had one of our imams, right, in San Diego, you know, maced, who got maced, maced right, right, I saw you that. know, I but saw standing that. up to the protesters. So yeah. it's good we experience these things. So Allah is like, kind of shaking us and being like, get out of your false sense of security and, and have some agency. I have to walk in Allah yeah, Azza not in the state, well, yeah. right? And then get up and do something yourself, right? Yeah. So. What I wanted to add in addition to these three mm. was something you alluded to, and I, if we're talking about raising our boys right and mm. even our girls, but mm. the issue of getting robbed for your bravery, meaning imagine we actually build bravery right and then it becomes pointless, right? Mm -hmm. Because every single one of us, especially teenagers and young mm. adults, you're, you're looking for acceptance, you're looking for belonging, that's natural, that's fine. So you're looking for a currency that you can sort of trade off mm -hmm. to get belonging from people, right? Mm -hmm. So like someone muscular like myself, right, mm -hmm. is gonna flex that on people. Someone doesn't have muscles like yourself, right, mm -hmm. it's gonna flex their brief. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't worry, a few push-ups, you'll be fine, you'll get there. <laughs> you'll get there. Uh, but the idea is we're all looking for something. And mm -hmm. so if someone is able to actually grab bravery, even that, yeah. can be sort of, uh, you can rip out of it its value. We started oh. talking about how foundational it is, but even that, when, when the first three people to enter the hellfire, one of them is gonna be a person who spent his life trying to get celebrated for his bravery. Mm -hmm. Imagine, of all the things, right? Oh. The first three people, one of them is Liuqal Jari. So he'll be, oh. it would be said about him, fearless, mm -hmm. right? And it was said, mm -hmm. so you're, going to be condemned for your misuse of, mm -hmm. you were actually brave, but mm -hmm. it's pointless. It's just like physical strength. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the point of physical strength if you use it to sort of harm the, the helpless and the weak and the vulnerable? What is the use of bravery if it is used towards shallow ends? Right, and that's, that's, that's so beautiful, mashallah. It's about yeah. And that, that, that is important because a lot of, um, you know, social media, plays a big part of this, you know, spreading the word and, and letting everybody know that, like, yo, I'm at the encampment, you know, renewing your intention before letting everybody know, before recording yourself and streaming live and mm. X, Y, Z, you know, you're sending all your friends, yo, guys, you got to come out here. You don't want to do it with the intention to just show off and be like, hey, I'm out here. Rather do it, okay, I'm for Allah, and I want everyone to come out to help this cause because I do see this as a way to help our brothers and sisters, right? Yeah. So, like, I think it needs a lot of renewing. Like, every, I think every post needs an intention, right, Sheikh? No, no, you're definitely yeah, right, man. You're definitely right. I mean, like you said, renewing the intention just to get back and anchor yeah. to your ultimate purpose. Exactly. With Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. No, Jazakumullah khair for this beautiful, beautiful insight. We could stay here in the cave and Nabitu fihi, inshallah, you can sleep here and talk about it. Let's cuddle in the man cave. It's oxymoronic, bro. No. No, but alhamdulillah, that's not brave. That's not brave at all. I can only pretend for so long. No, alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah khair for coming by. This was, mashallah, they had a a researcher, uh, a director's research retreat, and alhamdulillah, I just pulled him and said, you know what, let's talk about this issue, and jazamullah khair for coming through, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Beautiful brothers, I love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you in your endeavors, and use you as a means to, to, to motivate and keep these brothers and sisters consistent along with their parents, and uh, following along with this beautiful, beautiful means of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and have a rippling effect on those around them. And for all of you out there that are watching this, inshallah, Please take this, take this as a message to remind you of the importance of this particular manifestation of worship. Because without a doubt, when we tie this attribute 
of bravery to the one that has given us the faculties to be brave, this is where it can become worship. Whether you're out there in the camps or whether you're at home, may Allah SWT bless you for your effort and your intention. May Allah SWT bless all the brothers here for coming here and talking about this beautiful topic. topic. Jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you of those that are brave for his sake. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.